Well, good morning and welcome back to the channel. Really beautiful morning. As I think I said in last week's video, we, we've had some pretty stormy conditions over the last week or so and not hugely photogenic, very difficult to photograph in. But actually this morning it's, it's really calm, really quite peaceful. So I thought I'd just come out to a, a local-ish beach and just see what I can grab. Now there's not a huge amount of clouds and texture in the sky, apart from kind of behind me here. And so that's probably gonna be focusing in on at least over the next, well, what are we? We're about half an hour, 45 minutes away from sunrise. And again, as I've said countless times before, here on the North Coast during the winter months, we don't get to see the sun right on sunrise. But what I am hoping for now, there looks to be a little bit of cloud out to the out to the east, but what I am hoping for is we do get a little bit of sort of light coming through and perhaps giving us a little bit of colour in those clouds. Now another reason why I've come to this end of the beach is it's a big sort of open, vast sort of area of, of beach here, not a huge amount of features and things like that. And so coming over here, I've got this little outflow. You know how much I love my little outflows, but we've also got some kind of rocks and various bits and pieces. And in fact, on a lowish tide, um, you can actually walk pretty much all the way across to whenever you're in below Musudan Temple, which I've photographed before a couple of times. And some beautiful sort of textures and sort of little intimate details can be found over there. Now, given the fact that it looks like we are going to be very clear uh, skies this morning, probably not going to be ideal once the sun gets gets up to be sort of shooting too many, too many intimate details, but we'll see what we can grab. But I think what I'll do first and foremost is probably going to look to set up something while we're here in the sort of pre-sunrise color, maybe making use of this little outflow and we'll go from there. But really beautiful to be out on a lovely, calm, little bit coolish January morning here on the Causeway Coast. So I ended up changing tact pretty quickly. You know me and my little intimate scenes. And again, I think what really drew my eye was Again, the, the sun hasn't, in fact, we're starting to lose a little bit of that early morning color as well. Obviously there is probably some cloud on the eastern horizon, but in that sort of pre-sunrise light, just the edges of the sand patterns that have been created by the moving water, uh, just catching some lovely sort of light and shadow, light and shadow. Now, I don't think I did it proper justice. I couldn't really find a, a composition that really worked well either in the, the standard format or even in a, in a one by one format. Um, but I did make just a couple of little images just to kind of a little nod to the little intimate scene here along the outflow. So I'll throw those up now. I think there was maybe a couple of them. As I say, I don't think I did it justice, but it's, it's almost really just a, a nod to that early morning sort of pre-sunrise light rather than anything specific in the composition but and those clouds now behind me certainly have lost a lot of that potential not to say they won't get it back but I can already see that that lovely sort of purpley sort of glow has has departed us unfortunately so I'll throw these images up and then we'll wander on So we're starting to get what I like to call second wind. Not sure whether you're going to be able to make that out, but some of those high altitude clouds are now starting to take on some lovely colors. And actually it's more than the color that I'm really interested in. 
there's some lovely kind of sort of shapes and curves and even there's a couple of the clouds that are actually mimicking on the ground here and on a, a number of the beaches here along the north coast you get these lovely ridge lines now the beach is a little bit messy there's bumps and crunks and little bits of cruffy bits and what have you um, so it's not as clean as I would like had the, the camera in a portrait orientation because as well as making use of these sort of ridge lines in the beach I am trying to kind of get some lovely or get sort of highlight some of those lovely textures in the clouds as well but again the problem being there is a little bit of sort of cruff on the beach and you know, I've said this countless times before the brain's fantastic it's sort of getting you to ignore the cruff and then when you get home and look at the, at the 2D image you go huh I didn't realize the beach was so messy but I'm going to see whether we can maybe just make some it's almost just a case of you kind of know that maybe you're not going to come across something that's it's ideal but it's just almost trying to give a sense of place and I think that's just sort of the, the wider view some lovely pastel colors and maybe bringing through some of those textures in both the beach and also the clouds so We'll see whether we can get something set up. So that was really nice. Just um, the, the the further I went into the to the ripples, the more kind of or the cleaner it got, which was quite nice. Now I ended up taking off the polarizer because I was shooting quite wide and we had a lot of kind of blue in the sky didn't really want to have any sort of artifacts in there. And to be honest, I kind of also wanted the reflections in there as well. So just removed the polarizer and kept the case three stop on, which again, I don't think this is ever gonna get old for me. The fact that I can just take it on and off. And I know lots of people out there have been using these filters for a long time, but as usual, I'm late to the party. Now, what I was trying to find was in the sky, as I said earlier, there were some lovely sort of wispy sort of clouds. And I would love to have found one of those ripples, one of those sort of ridges in the sand that was mimicking that. Didn't quite find it. I think that can be a very powerful compositional element. If you can find that symmetry, something that is sort of in the sky mimicking something in the, um, in, in the foreground as well, but not, not quite. But as I say, the, the further I went into those ripples, the kind of cleaner the scene got. We're about to get the, the sun kind of popping up uh, over the visible horizon. And so I think that may draw a halt to the photography that I'm kind of doing at the moment because I think it might be a little bit too harsh. But what it might allow me to do is with the probably throw on a six stop and maybe start to do a little bit of intentional camera movement. We'll, we'll wait and see. but rather nice indeed. So what I'll do is I'll throw up a couple of images from here amongst the ripples and then we shall wander on. Oh and the other thing I spent a good bit of time over the last week really breaking down my tripod and giving it a damn good cleaning and of course it smells of kind of WD-40 and oily products but working like a charm but my hands now smell like WD-40. Well, they did, did just smell like WD-40 up until about 10 minutes ago when I got slobbered over by a very friendly collie dog. So now I smell like a garage that's run by dogs. Right, so we're now starting to get, you can start to see the, the, sort, of, the, the sort of peaks of those waves starting to pick up some of that early morning light. We might just get one more image with that sort of just very ethereal look to it but I think this will probably mean I'm gonna to have to change tack a little bit if we're gonna get any more images this morning. But as I say, throw up these images and we'll wander on. started with the intimate scene and I think we're going to finish with the intimate scene so just as that sun is now poking up over the visible horizon below me here there's a lovely little kind of scene that really caught my eye 
kind of a couple of broken shells and then there's a little bit of a twist in the in in the sand just how the waves have been kind of washing over it but it's actually the rising sun that i think really kind of drew me to the scene and that's because those twists have formed a little bit of a ridge a very very small ridge which is of course picking up some of that early morning light now that sun has now as you can see on my face kind of is now visible the images that i was making before of this scene uh, the the sun hadn't quite risen up but we were still getting some of that lovely reflection now we have sort of some direct light in there so i'm going to go ahead and make another image now i'm right out at about 100 mil so i am focus stacking this you know, with three or four images got it in a portrait orientation with perhaps a thought shooting a little bit wider for the scene allowing me to kind of crop in maybe at a more four by five orientation so now that that sun has is directly illuminating that ridge i'll go ahead make this image and i'll throw it up little scenes like this here you know me this is what i live for love love the bigger vista love the lovely calm mornings and shooting the wider scene but little intimate scenes like this this is what floats my boat I think that's probably going to be me for the morning. The sun now is not harsh, but what's really sort of stopping me from going any further is that tide is coming in and we're now kind of right on the, the edge of where kind of all the cruff and all the mess is. So we've lost a lot of those lovely sand patterns. Um, but a very enjoyable morning nonetheless. A little bit of intimate work, a little bit of sort of wider scene, maybe an ICM image or two as well. But yeah, rather beautiful. And I think actually over the next couple of days, the weather's starting to kind of calm down a little bit. And we might get another couple of mornings like this as well. So fingers crossed. But as always, guys, thanks a lot for following, following along. And until the next video, take care. Bye-bye.